episode of Surviving the Survivor. We bring you the best guests in all of true crime. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button. Here's your host, Emmy Award-winning broadcaster, Joel Walton. What's up, STS Nation, and welcome to another episode of Surviving the Survivor, the podcast that promises to bring you the very best guests in all of true crime. And sometimes, like yesterday, we do it with our equipment not working, where I can't hear the guests and when it is an unmitigated disaster, but somehow still manage to do an hour and 15 minutes plus of a podcast. But today we come to you obviously with great scott it's your true crime phil the show is so good it happens every friday but there is breaking news here significant breaking news and we go directly to our correspondent in the field scott duffy scott duffy a 4.8 magnitude earthquake the epicenter in hunterdon county new jersey in a place called lebanon new jersey not to be confused with beirut this is a different lebanon and uh a substantial quake that now the New York media elite, since it happened on their doorstep, are reporting about it 24-7, nonstop, about the 15-second earthquake that shook dishwashers, washing machines, and freaked out dogs all across the tri-state area. Uh, but people who are high up in these New York skyscrapers said that they felt like they were dizzy. It felt like it lasted an eternity. Um, and that eternity was 15 seconds. I hope there are no aftershocks. On a serious note, earthquakes are no laughing matter. My wife, the notorious COE, is from Los Angeles, after all, uh, the home of earthquakes. Scott Duffy, what did you experience and when, please? Yeah, it was, it was shortly after 10 o'clock this morning, and I was uh, just hanging out in my living room with my dog and all of a sudden you heard it you and then i started looking up at my pictures on the shelf and they're starting to shake so i'm like okay low flying plane and then my dog took off my dog never takes off for any anything like that uh other than i got up and i said no now i can feel it. this is an earthquake so it it's and, and then of course all the text started all mm -hmm. um everybody feeling it one way or another around town. So mm. yeah, I'm northwest of Philadelphia. So hitting in New Jersey, it, it was um, it was pretty good. It was my second time in my life that I remember feeling an earthquake. I was in LA one time during a conference and definitely felt that. So it was the first time here. I haven't felt one before. Uh, that is fascinating, actually. You are likely much closer than they are in New York City as Frederick Morris Roosevelt Brown starts to claw his way through the wooden door trying to get to me. Um, and the COE, I know, will handle that. Uh, COE, maybe he needs to go in his crate for a moment. In Delaware, I did not feel the earthquake, but others did. Of course, this is a Friday on Surviving the Survivor. Can't get any worse than yesterday. And we have a big, important story that we're going to really dive into in a moment. But uh, look at this, Scott Duffy. Ten seconds of dogs freaking. Uh, Phil Waters, what is it about uh, non-humans? We go back to the tsunami that happened in Phuket, Thailand, uh, a bunch of years back, maybe 2008, 2009, 2010. Not a single animal was injured, I don't think, during that tsunami. They knew. They knew Phil Waters. They went to higher ground. Are these animals smarter than us? Do they sense things before us, Phil Waters? I don't know that they're smarter than us. I don't think so. I mean, because they are animals uh, mm. in the sense that they don't have an intellect. Mm. Of course, there's that some hurts. of us animals that don't have that either. So I'm not sure that's a fair comparison. But um, I think animals are more instinctive than we are. And so I think that they sense things quicker than we do. Hmm. I thought he was going to continue on. I, I was a little insulted that he said that uh, they're not smarter than us. Um, I would like to think that Brett Brown is, in fact, with a walnut walnut sized brain. I asked, as a matter of fact, this morning, prior to the earthquake, uh, prior to 
New York City, the epicenter of the world in their own mind. And I used to be part of that whole mindset. And if you turn on CNN, Fox News, News Nation right now, they will be talking about the earthquake in their backyard for the next two hours nonstop, about the 15 seconds that shook the world, because they're all there. And uh, unlike myself, they're all self Um, Anyway, I was talking to Carmela today, and I said to her, he loves Fred Brown. Usually Carm likes to poke fun at my dog, say that they're very poorly trained, that they're animals, because I guess they are. Um, but just this morning, I said to Carm, do you think that these dogs have real emotions, real feelings? And I said, how could Fred Brown be intelligent? He knows how to sit. His brain can be no bigger than a walnut, um, literally. But uh Scott Duffy, do you think dogs do have emotions that they do feel? Uh, it appears to me that Fred and Ethel are constant, constantly communicating with one another. Uh, do you believe that this is the case? Oh, I believe dogs have a lot. They're great creatures and cats too. I do have a cat, but she's she's um, she she knows how to handle her own. She's she's a tough cat, but yeah, do dogs have an amazing sense of. Um, I say they have good people skills. They're very aware of what people uh, are thinking with them. So they know if you like them, love them, or they know that you don't like them. This is true. And uh, they're the, they're the let kings. Me, let me and... say something about that, about dogs. Please do, Phil. Scott is, Scott is right. Um, you know, now some of my friends will get a little shook when I say something like this, but they need to listen to what I'm saying. As do most of these people that <laughs> want to criticize. But anyway, uh, I digress. There is a reason why I believe that uh, dog backwards is God. <laughs> because he created a dog to show his unconditional love for us and if you think about it your puppy dog is glad to see you no matter what kind of a mood you're in and dogs can take a lot of crap off of people their owners and they still will love their owners unconditionally so they are amazing animals. And I think in terms of we're using the word smart, uh, I think there are dogs that are smart in the sense that they they learn. They can learn things and like, you know, Fred being able to sit and all that kind of stuff. So uh, and, and different dogs have different levels of being smart. So there are some dogs that are smarter than other dogs, but. I just know that the more I'm around people, the more I like my dog. Hmm. Uh, Heather Lynn is asking, uh, this is off topic, is Joel at a new office space? This is um, the original beautiful uh, little set we have here. This is Studio 1K. Uh, Global Headquarters, despite being um, unveiled just a short time ago, is currently going uh, under complete renovations to try to fix the tech issue after yesterday's disaster. Uh, Ellen says, Phil, you are 100% correct. We'll be back in uh, global headquarters, world headquarters, um, sometime hopefully early next week. Uh, the COE and I have to figure out why we lost all audio during an audio podcast. Um, the audio file, the wizard of all this, Space Coast, uh, who is like literally hacking into my computer somehow. I don't even understand it was trying to fix my settings live yesterday during our show. Um, he has long arms, but he cannot reach. He cannot extend from LA to Miami, those arms. So uh, he's going to walk us through it. And um, it's probably something simple, like my Bluetooth was disconnecting or something. So we'll try to figure it out. But uh, that's why I'm in a different set. A uh, big shout out to Lean Salverson. Um, I could do an entire show on dogs alone. We know that. Um, hi, Joel. I'm close to Tampa. So if I bring my copies around, yes, we're going to be doing uh, the Oxford Exchange in Tampa 
Oh, look at this. I didn't even bring this up. Everyone knows I did not bring this up. Tour dates. New York City will be May 14th or May 15th. Boston, May 16th. Tickets for Boston are on sale, and I'm going to put a link in on Instagram, at Surviving the Survivor. May 21st, Toronto. I think we're going to do two events there. Tallahassee, Miami, mm -hmm. back to Miami here. We're also doing something in Miami on May 6th, which is actually Holocaust Remembrance Day. So I will put that out as well. And then uh, Los Angeles. And huge, uh, huge shout out before we get into the uh, main topic here. Goes out to uh, Super Planner Girl. Um, this is why I love STS Nation. We get emails, not... Uh, here and there, but consistently saying, Hey, I love the podcast. Can I help? And trust me, we can use all the help we can get, um, for a number of reasons, but we are, um, it, it on a serious note, it's hard to put out as much content as we're putting out and we get underwater a lot. And, um, so the community comes together and that's why I say best guest, better community and super planner girl offered to help. And she literally helped put this, um, she helped put this newsletter out, went out this morning, and we're going to be doing it very consistently. It's got like the karmism of the month. It's got a column from our producer extraordinaire, the one who gets all the great guests, Steve Cohen. Uh, it's got a profile of a best guest that Steve books. So, and if you want it, you can scan here. That's been up for a while and we will get you uh, the newsletter as well. But it was an exciting week because I got boxes full of books and, uh, Carm and I have to sign a million things and uh, she's hard at work uh, in her condo signing away. Uh, the women in the condo said, Carm, come down to the pool and hang out and do nothing, which we like to do every day for a few hours. Just do nothing by the pool. And she said, I can't do nothing today. I have homework. I have to sign books. I said to Carm, what COE, let's put that. I'll show that video at the end today because not everyone saw the video from yesterday. And I think that would be good to uh, put up there. But um, in any case, if you're just joining us, um, and, and I hope you've been here for hours, but if you're just joining us, even though we've only been on air for 12 minutes, but if you are just joining us, uh, the breaking oh, news story. Beautiful today. <laughs> and thank you for doing this. Look, the COE's doing this. Do you ever think that at 84, almost 85? Can, can you give, here's the context. So these sheets that you see, and there are a lot of them, uh, this is for uh, signedsurvivorbook.com, signedsurvivorbook.com. Uh, we are signing books, both just the signature and custom. Someone said something really funny. They said custom signatures, and they spelled it C-U-S-S-T-O-M because Carm cusses. So you can get a custom or a cuss um, signature and this is us we got piles of these books and piles of these sheets and this is Carm and I from yesterday uh let's take a watch it's a little fun then we'll get in the story Carm you look beautiful today <laughs> and thank you for doing this I love it did you ever think that at 84 almost 85 that you'd be signing autographs and look how many of these they sent us these are all books that people bought notice i'm just working and not talking <coughs> if you want Carm to sign it these are there's two different types there's a custom in this one it's very complicated um, because but everybody if you them. want a custom signed it's sign survivorbook.com the one and only Carm will write cuss words at my um and my direction but, believe me i will Carm, not i want to tell you and my wife you look beautiful today both of you what a lovely con day it has been they are all beautiful. Yes. Why don't you take a little picture? Of take a, the hardest working um, uh, Fred. Take a picture of Fred. <laughs> Look how cute she is. She literally covered herself before. Okay, Bugs, please post that. So just a little backstory to that beautiful video is... Um, Carm was refusing to sign things, and she's getting very... Um, how do I say this? Um, in her elder years she's becoming much more stubborn so prior to that and, and the coe and her gang up on me so i was um we were trading some words and then the coe said i'm gonna videotape you and the minute that camera went on i was like oh you guys look so beautiful today because i know how to play to the camera and uh, so that was the genesis of that video phil waters did you have something to interject there i feel like you did no i was just uh listening to the the commercial message here. 
Oh, beautiful. Okay. Well, on to the story today. Uh, this is actually sooner than we usually typically get onto a, a big story. This is um, a story that has me very curious, uh, and I, I reached out. This is about the two mothers that went missing in Oklahoma. Not to be confused with Oklahoma moms, because they're actually living in Kansas. And as Dr. Roger Rhodes, who's from Oklahoma, and ironically, so is uh, Phil Waters. Um, Phil, have you ever spent time in the panhandle? It was described to me as literally like a handle on a pan above is Kansas, below is Texas, and that little sliver is Oklahoma. Have you ever spent time out in that handle? Spent time out there? No. Mm. There's nothing out there to spend time with. <laughs> Um, COE, let's get the picture of that road. So, um, this is the story. The bottom line is, uh, this past weekend, these two women, and here they are right here. And I've got a lot of information on this. So we're probably going to spend a good amount of, of this show on this. You see these two women and both mothers, Jillian Kelly, Jillian with one L 39 years old. And you've got Veronica Butler, 27. Well, Veronica, had a scheduled visitation with her two young children, I believe eight and six, and it was her daughter's birthday. And so they were driving from uh, Kansas into Oklahoma in the Panhandle area. And it was about a 15 mile trip uh, from what I understand. Um, we all love filterless, filterless Phil. Yes, we do. We all love fil filterless Phil, but they're about, Three miles short from their uh, spot in Oklahoma, where they were going to have this visitation. And that is where authorities say they find an abandoned car. Uh, the women have not been seen since. Bill Waters, in your storied career, this is a man who's investigated 400 plus homicides. Um, how incredibly rare is it for two women, two moms, to go missing simultaneously. Why did balloons just stream by me? I have no idea. But Phil, <laughs> um, how rare is this? How weird is this? Rare, rare, rare. rare. Oh, okay. Well, weird, rare, I guess. Yeah. I don't know that I would call it rare. I mean, it's, it's something that... Uh, you know, when we're saying two moms, that is a fact, but it's really not stating the truth about this particular incident. So the um, the one the one young lady there, um, she was going, as I understand it, was going to meet her child or children for an exchange of some kind. And that was Veronica. And Jillian was the, the wife of a new pastor who had been selected, uh, called to service at a church in Elkhart, Kansas. In Elkhart, Kansas is right on the state line between Kansas and Oklahoma. And there's the population of, of Elkhart's about 1900 people. It's very, a very, very small community. And I'm sure a very tight knit community and everybody knows everybody's business. So what it appears is, is that Jillian was there in support of Veronica and they went into Oklahoma down, I think it's 95, uh, State Road 95, and which is, and, and I think it was Avenue L or Road L. And that, that's a good shot of it. Yeah, there's nothing there. There's nothing there. And here, 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 Phil, here's the actual road. So again, uh, yeah. it is abandoned 45 miles from they were last, where they were last seen. I've heard conflicting reports about the distance. Veronica and uh, Jillian never made it. This is the area where the car was found, right, right here. So the, the situation is that they're heading to a location to make this exchange 
whatever they're going to do there with these children, with her children, with Veronica's children. And in my view, I mean, something just goes really sideways. And, and this is just pure speculation on my part. So I'll get that out there right up front. The, my sense is, is that there was a location that they were to meet to make this exchange. Now, supposedly the biological father who, what I've read, apparently has custody. He's in some drug rehab place somewhere. Yeah. So my question is, is who was there to make the exchange? His family members, a friend, you know, that kind of thing. But my sense is, is that perhaps the location was changed or they were intercepted en route to the location by someone and the Veronica and Jillian threatened in some way or were harmed in some way and because they got out of control and whoever's got them, took them, didn't know what to do. So in a panic, we got to get them out of there. Now, I have seen where the um, OSBI, Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation, has indicated that there are some signs at the car that indicate, uh, I think they're using the words foul play. So my guess is there, they're finding some sort of blood evidence, spatter, transfer, something that would indicate that one of these or both of these women were injured in some way and have been abducted, have been taken from that location. Scott Duffy, that was uh, actually my question to follow up with you. Um, So the two phrases you never really want to hear associated with a crime uh, and the OSBI, and I want to ask you why they are suddenly involved as well, but um, foul play, it's been described as quote unquote foul play and also a suspicious disappearance. Uh, what does that really mean? What Law enforcement uses those terms, but is, is that what Phil is referring to? Do you think that they likely found, I mean, I would assume they would have to have some evidence from that car, something that indicates this? Yeah. It, so suspicious would be something that's beyond um, typical or normal activity. So for example, let's say they, their car, um, broke down and they both get out of the car and they're walking to go find help to go find, you know, I can't see anything. It's probably miles and miles, but so, so then a car would be broken down and, and if, uh, somebody law enforcement, whoever comes across that car says, Hey, the car's broken down. It looks broken down. Maybe the hood's up or whatever. And, and then try to determine who owns the car, right? And then, then you, is this just a car that's broken down and abandoned? But, you know, so to add suspicious nature is something around that car, in that car, indicates something beyond that of a broken down car and the occupant going to get help. Um, so I, I would say, and then of course, then you develop an investigation. You have a point A to a point B. Somebody's leaving their location, two people in this particular story, and are heading to to go um, meet or pick up their uh, one of their children, right? And and so now that you know that has that, that they left, but they haven't arrived, and now you have an abandoned car something around that car adds to suspicious not to mention everybody has a phone so no calls made to 911 no calls made for AAA or whatever is out there so th- that th- th- they built enough to say this is this is suspicious in nature and and um they fear for the worst scott duffy um 
the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation was brought in. Uh, you are the Federal Bureau of Investigation. It, fe it feels, and I, I think every state has some uh, state investigative agency. Um, how is the OSBI different than the FBI, but why do they bring them in? So I think you said it well, Joel. Every state agency has some sort of um, um, investigative agency that has state jurisdiction. And so they typically would be the lead. Most states have them. They're called different things. Um, Pennsylvania has, they, they have the state police and then they have the attorney general's investigators. Um, so we don't have a state bureau uh, of investigators. And, and so it would just be natural. This is um, whatever state they've left and to where, the, and, and then obviously to where the car is recovered, the, um, the, I, I guess the, the lead agency would be that which, okay, we know that they left one state. We're not sure at what point did this, whatever took place, um, happen. What, in other words, was, were, it, let's just say for 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 the sake of this show that uh, harm was come to them and they were uh, kidnapped, etc. At what, where did that take place? Where the car was left? Probably not. Um, where was did it happen earlier? Were there at least two people so somebody can drive the car and somebody take mm -hmm. take the women? All those things come in place. So. You're going to have the, uh, uh, the originating um, location would say, hey, we got a missing person report. We know they live here. We know they were here. We know they left here. But we don't know where crossing state lines or not did this um, uh, suspected whatever the, the, the narrative is happen that that rises to the level of a criminal uh, investigation as opposed to two women were stranded and got out of a car and left. So um, you're going to have multiple parties. And and because of the state crossing state lines, I'm sure the FBI is, uh, is in some sort of support role. Uh, very well explained. Sarah Adams, is the father a suspect? The short answer is at least that we know of, no. Uh, there are a lot of things in the background with the the father and the father's mother that we're going to dig into as we uh, go through this. Uh, this, again, always fascinates me because you have Phil Waters, retired homicide detective who did this for a living. This is not a true crime was not a, an avocation. It was a vocation. It was what he did for his uh, his livelihood. And he uh, he's thinking this through. I can see it in that head of his while he is negotiating his third Ferrari. I can see that he is trying to figure out different details of this case. Same deal with uh, Scott Duffy, um, who, because he has four kids now looking to trade in his car for a bicycle. Um, he can no longer, but while Phil is buying more and more Ferraris. So life's not fair. That's what I teach my kids. Uh, one man has 17 Ferraris. Another man is downgrading to a bicycle. That is life. Um, dad was supposed to, this is correct, Frankie Figs. Dad was supposed to have checked into inpatient rehab on March 22nd. I wonder if he did. Uh, again, we're going to get to, we're getting a little ahead of it here. So I just want to um, reel it back in a touch. And uh, this is some court documents that the COE, the notorious COE, she's up late. Looking at court documents. I don't know what happened. This podcast has really transformed the COE. She was in news. She was never, I can say this publicly, she never loved being in news, but she's really enjoying um, the research aspect. Oh, Frankie, thank you so much for sending in the court docs. But uh, the COE is, I don't have to, I used to have to motivate her, but now she's motivated on her own. It's a beautiful thing to watch. Um, the AIT is what I used to call the COE, an adult in training. And she's almost graduated into adulthood. And now she's uh, she's taking this podcast very seriously, which I love. Um, rock chalk here. Uh, please uh, reach out to us, survivingthesurvivor at gmail.com, because uh, rock chalk has been commenting. It appears that rock chalk knows the family, at least knows um, a member of the family here. Um, 
not Veronica, but Jillian Kelly, I think. Uh, maybe she knows both. But Rock Chalk, if you do know and you have uh, any interest in um, either coming on or possibly, uh, you know, using our platform uh, to get help, to get the awareness out, and someone in the family wants to speak, let us know, surviving survivor at gmail.com. But this gets more and more complicated, but I just want to lay down um, some of the other details. So this was Veronica Butler's car. And again, uh, Rock Chalk here says that they were going to Four Corners Trading Post about five miles further south. We, we've heard three miles short, but this is uh, the intersection from what I can tell. And um, there's not much there. Um, Bill, I was real quickly, this was Veronica Butler's car. The condition of the car publicly is unknown, although you just heard Bill Waters say that for them to call this foul play or, or suspicious, uh, they probably have something. And um, these two mothers were supposed to pick up Veronica Butler's six-year-old daughter and the eight-year-old son, and it was a six-year-old's uh, birthday. Um, and of course, uh, Jillian was in a kind of a supervisory role here to just make sure that this visitation went well. But Phil, one of the questions that came up, I'm curious to get your take here. And I heard um, a commentator on one of the news channels saying uh, digital forensics on this will be tough because it's so remote. Uh, there's a possibility that there wasn't even cell service in this particular area. Is that is that particular aspect a concern here that it's so remote? Where they found the car? Yeah, this is it. This is basically the intersection where it was found right here. And ask ask that question again. I'm not. Uh, I didn't quite. People catch were that. saying that um, just to 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 get cell phone pings and digital data oh. might be hard because it was such a rural and remote area that the cell service might not be sufficient. Yeah, the 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 digital foot footprint's going to be minimal. I would imagine. I mean, I don't know what kind of cell phone towers they've got out there and uh, that kind of capabilities, but certainly you're limited. You're not going to get video cameras. I mean, there's a lot of stuff digitally that <laughs> you're just not going to have. And that's, that's in the favor of the people that, that uh, took her all took them. But I, I have no doubt they're trying to do what they can. If they do have any uh, ability to track those phones. And um, I would, you know, they haven't said anything. They haven't released a lot of information here. And so that's that's kind of interesting to me. But my sense is that perhaps they have identified some possible suspect or suspects. And they're just not wanting to reveal what they know to maintain the integrity of the investigation they've got going. So, um uh, it's it's interesting from that aspect because you have really other than the car and what they found in the car you have very few active leads to where these folks may be at least from what we know um mish cavernos coming to us all the way from cape town south africa do we know how they became friends was it from their kids school I don't think that they were actually very close friends. Um, you heard Phil say it at the beginning that um, people in the, in this part of the state, uh, in this area, generally seem to know each other because it's there's not a lot of people and it's it's rural and it's a tight knit community. Uh, but the uh, Jillian Kelly, the older woman, was accompanying the younger woman on a visitation, and uh, it was obviously to see her own children. And we'll get into some of the issues that were going on domestically. Uh, but I don't think we would describe it as friends. I just want to say hello, speaking of friends, to our friend in Nigeria, Mariam uh, Kano is back. So uh, I love the fact that we've got um, an STS Nation member um, from Nigeria. And then we've got Rock Chalk back. Uh, Hugaton is a very small town and everyone knows everyone. There you go. Jillian is a kind, helpful Christian woman and Veronica is a small business owner. So again, uh, Rock Chalk and Dilly Pickles. Uh, she was in the chat last time we did this story, and I believe she is from this area and knows some of the um, 
people involved as well. So uh, please let them know we're thinking of them and obviously trying to get the word out uh, to see uh, what could have happened. Uh, Phil Waters, I just have a quick question. Did your childhood home in Oklahoma, did it, were you raised on a street like, that looked like this, Phil Waters? <laughs> no, I was raised in Tulsa, Oklahoma, which is green country. So no, uh, mm. you've got to get, you've got to get west of, of Oklahoma city to get to that kind of stuff. So yeah. Yeah. I don't know if everyone knows this. You said your father was a cowboy and you've got Cherokee Indian. So I picture you uh, in a little white picket fence house on this corner, but you're saying this is not the case. This is not how you grew up. Uh, hmm. You did not come up and dust yourself off and kick your cowboy boots off every day. Well, I've done that, but not, no, no, we, uh, we had a very uh, nice community there in Tulsa. It was a great, great place to grow up not uh, flat and barren like the panhandle uh, i don't think i've ever been to tulsa so i need to get there uh who knows maybe we'll do a book signing there scott duffy as we uh, continue to break this down the osbi uh spokesperson a guy named hunter mckee he came out this is a direct quote i'm about to read to you we are not sure at this time talking about what happened we are investigating this as everything is on the table. We are hopeful that they are still alive, Veronica um, and um, Veronica and Jillian. I was blanking on that and I was looking for a name. So uh, we're hoping that they're still alive, Veronica and Jillian. Um, but we are going to do everything in our power to track these two people down as quickly as possible. And he says that they have been searching nonstop, uh, that they've re-examined that the, the route they went to pick their children up on and said, right now, our agents are still investigating where their final destination was and where these women were traveling to. We knew, we know they were traveling from Kansas. We know they were driving through Oklahoma and their abandoned vehicle was found in Oklahoma. Uh, what do you read into that, if anything, Scott Duffy? And what would police not be revealing right now, law enforcement? What would they not be revealing? Um, they would not be revealing anything that they don't want um, somebody to be able to read or listen to some news report and then be able to say later, you know, in some sort of confession that uh, only a, um, the, the, the people who are possibly responsible for what, what we all believe is a criminal act um, of how they came upon these people and what they've done. So if there's something that they're holding close to the vest, for example, spent shells, um, or anything else to indicate that beyond, let, let's just say they did find blood. Is there something else to indicate how that, that blood got there for, you know, what was it some sort of stabbing? Was it some sort of defensive fight? Um, because you're not just taking one person, there are two people involved. And, and so, um, that, that, that takes, that takes, a tremendous amount of force and will in order to subdue and then to remove them. So they're going to keep that close to the vest. If there's things that they like, they're not even putting out there that there's blood. They're just using the word suspicious. Um, I haven't heard if they even put out what was found in the car. For example, were their personal belongings and their phones located in and around the car? to where those possible tracking capabilities don't exist. So it, it, it um, and, and I had this question too, and they're, and they're asking the questions is, 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 was this the first time that they've, you know, decided to make this trek on this route, or is this a routine route or the most obvious route that they're going to, leave Kansas and, and then go into Oklahoma to where if this was a targeted planned event that somebody would be able to 
pick them off um, at a certain location as opposed to following them from point A and then making their determination this is the best opportune spot to do what we need to do. So those law enforcement, it, it, the statement itself sounds like a great um, public statement. Hey, we're investigating. We have all available resources out there, but we're not letting on to anything yet mm. as to motive or or any w whatever might have been done in order to stop them, subdue them, and uh, and subsequently remove them from from the car. Uh, Dilly Pickles with some uh, interesting info. Jillian's husband and Veronica's fiance went looking for them and contacted police after no response uh, to text. You see the tip line at the bottom, 1-800-522-8017, uh, tips at osbi.ok.gov. Again, the number 1-800-522-8017 for those listening and tips at osbi.ok.gov in case you're a trucker going through Oklahoma and Kansas right now. You see something, you say something, you call. Um, and then you've got Dilly Pickles here. Just an FYI, and this is very important, and we'll, we're going to discuss this in a few moments because there were some issues going on uh, between the baby daddy uh, and Veronica Butler and the uh the grandmother of uh, the baby daddy or the mother, I should say the baby daddy. So uh, just an FYI, the paternal grandmother lives about 17 miles straight West of this intersection. This is also the address of record for where the ex uh, and where he grew up. Uh, one interesting point on um, Bill Waters. I mean, there's a lot of interesting points, but one of the things that we didn't know initially and then found out was Veronica Butler's school, I think, is like a mile from here. And they put it on lockdown um, at one point. This was very early on. What does that tell you? Uh, for them to put a school on lockdown, they've got to think that there's something at play, right? I think that may have been just to err on the side of caution. I don't know that it's not been communicated that <clears throat> that the principal at that school, the superintendent, were given any kind of specific information. But I think that was, you know, in these days and times, that was probably a smart move on his part just to make sure. And, um, you know, this this whole this whole area here, the you know, Hugoton and, and Elkhart, I mean, Hugoton's only got about 3,700 people in it. So it's a very, this is a very, very small, small community. Uh, they were reported coming out of Elkhart. That's why I brought up the Elkhart issue. But the, um, uh, that school, I think, and I'm sure someone will correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that school is north of the intersection where the car was found if I'm not mistaken, but uh, if somebody out there that there's a lot of folks that are posting here that, that are from that area that are kind of getting things where they need to be. So uh, I, but I think when I checked on the map, I believe that school is actually North of the, uh, of the intersection where the car was found, but, and it's very close and everybody's close, right? You just talked about the grandmother, you know, she's west of there, very close. So it's all in this in this area. And look, we don't know what we don't know. OSBI and the people involved in the investigation, they know who Veronica and Jillian were going to meet. They know why they were going there to meet them. And uh, some of these folks over here, you know, are, we've got the smartest people in the SDS nation that are in from that area here that are posting, uh, mm. kind of giving the updates and filling in the blanks on a lot of this stuff. Yeah, and Phil, right here, uh, to your point, Rock Chalk again, the, it is a tiny country school north of the car, just north okay, of, right. of where the okay, car is. Okay, so um, the... Um, Again, 
there are a lot of known factors here by law enforcement. And again, when they talked about what they saw at the car indicated foul play, suspicious circumstances. I'm just speaking from the aspect of what I know in my experience, what I would say when I get to a car and I see something that indicates something suspicious. And more times than not, it's going to be signs of a struggle inside the car or outside of the car. And that is usually a blood evidence indication on the car. So, and that, that makes it, and these two women obviously are missing. And so that's, what's going to be the indication, I think. And, uh, whatever they found in the car. I mean, we just haven't been told a lot of things. And I, I really, I, whoever's running the investigation at OSBI, I, I got to give them props for not doing what most of these agencies feel pressured to do, which is release everything they've got uh, at the very beginning of something like this. And it gets the media all stirred up. You know, everybody, you know, we need to know, we need to know. Well, you don't need to know, okay? And the the law enforcement officials that are working this case, they're the ones that need to know. And they're not going to, and I, I again, uh, this is, I think it's great the way they're running this thing in the sense that, uh, to use Scott's term, and I used it the other night, uh, keeping it close to the vest. Because we don't want to do anything to satisfy a bunch of egos with the media or other people that are coming up with conspiracy theories and all that crap that's going to compromise. Look, there is a possibility these women are still alive. Mm -hmm. So why in the world would we need to go out and just pacify the onlookers, the, the rubberneckers, and compromise possibly their safety. So um, I think it's great the way they're running it. And I'm praying that this comes out where they locate them and they're okay. Uh, and uh, and this thing gets resolved quickly. But uh, yeah, this is the whole, the whole thing's alarming, but I hope the law enforcement officials release information as they need to that serves an investigative purpose, not just to satisfy a bunch of people clamoring for more information because they think they need to know it. Amen to that, Phil Waters. Uh, doesn't have to be a Sunday for you to preach. I know that. And so uh, <laughs> there you go. Uh, coming from the Jewish guy here. Uh, Susan, I love this. This comment came up the last time we did this story, so I have to address this. Not only was my dad a deputy for 57 years in Gray County, Texas, my brother was sheriff of Wichita County, Kansas for 20 years, 38 years in law enforcement. Scott Duffy, you served 20 years or spent, I always say served, in the FBI. Could you have done an additional 37 years? Um, mm -hmm. You'd still be working for a lot, of, a lot more years. Could you have done 37 mm -hmm. more years, Scott Duffy? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's fantastic. Well, so so kudos to her dad and brother for those lengthy careers. No. Um, Bill Waters would still be working another 20 years. That, um, well, I, I, I had 33 years in and and uh, at my at my age. Um, you have to do 24 more. Could you have done 24 I, I, more I, years, Bill? Oh, I, I could have done it if that's where the Lord had led me, but. <laughs> That that isn't what he. That's not what happened. So, uh, but yeah, I, mean, I I I love being a cop. I love being a homicide detective. It was uh, it wasn't what I did. It was what I was and what I am. So I I no I, I that but but I will tell you what I've got friends of mine that are retiring with forty something years, mm. uh, 40, 40 plus, and. Good for them. Now, I think anybody, I you got, I mean, her dad, her brother, I, somebody sticks in it that long, that's, uh, that is commendable in my view. That, because uh, it, it, it's not easy being a cop. And 
Uh, not everybody's cut out for it. And, uh, you know, so, uh, yeah, for, for 57 years, holy crap, you know, that's uh, <laughs> Bill that's, Waters. That's almost, um, that's almost, uh, I mean, that's 10 years that's off of how old I am. Yeah. So that, that's, you know. <laughs> Bill Waters, um, what was it like for you when you retired? We're, we're digressing for one moment here because you're a guy that has to be busy and have a schedule. I'm that way. I need to be busy. Did you lose your mind the first couple of weeks, months after you retired? Oh, no, 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 no. I had, I had planned on staying a year longer. And uh, uh, like I said, the Lord had different plans for me. And I had a leap of faith and retired a year earlier than what I had planned. And I retired on December 30th of 2017, and I opened up my private investigations company on the 1st of January, 2018. So did not did not miss a step. There you go. That's what I expected. Dilly Pickles here. Uh, for all you young kids in the uh, in the audience, it takes a lot of hard work. Look at Phil Waters. He's not buying Ferraris, uh, just playing around. He's working hard. Uh, although... Phil, let me just tell you one thing. The COE is going to go crazy here, and Scott Duffy. By the way, we have to get Scott talking. The ratio is um, is is uh, imploding on us here today. But just a quick story. This happens in Miami quite often. I'm at dinner yesterday. Meet the COE's friend. No names to be mentioned here. Get into a lovely con. <laughs> get into a lovely conversation. Uh, great guy. Wonderful guy. Uh, he's 38 years old. And of course, we always get into the topic of um, what do you do? You know, that that comes up. It's part of what, you know, you just heard Phil. I thought she was, I thought the COE was going to call me yelling at me to stop. Uh, long story short, uh, he says to me, I'm in mechanic school. Uh, that's not something you hear to, for, for airplanes. Not a typical answer that you hear from most people here. Uh, 38 years old. So, you know, first of all, it's a little bit older to be going to school. Come to find out he's retired. He's retired. 38 years old, Phil Waters. Um, had a very successful business, very young, and he's retired. Um, I was so happy for him. Uh, needless to say, I went home and um, got into bed, curled up into a fetal position and began to weep. Um, I meet a lot of people, Phil Waters, who are in their mid thirties in Miami who are retired, uh, retired. Um, that's neither here nor there. It's just a personal issue of mine. I'm trying to deal with it. <laughs> I need to go to therapy. Um, you need to buy, uh, talk to your mother, talk yeah, to Carmen, and let he, he her could, put you on so, the, put you on the couch and, uh, and give you some, uh, some, uh, licensed he, therapeutical work. Yeah. Now he could buy many Ferraris, but he buys airplanes instead. Uh, so that's, oh, well. that's, where that's we go. pretty cool. I had a pilot's license, uh, Did way you? back when, and, I, uh, yeah, I considered buying my own plane and then some sort of things happened and it, I didn't, I wasn't able to do it, but, uh, yeah, that's a very, that's very cool. Flying planes is, that's a, that's another cool activity. Oh, uh, look at this, Phil. I want to hire, and Phil does have, uh, an investigate kindred spirits investigations, kindred spirits investigations. I want to hire Phil to find my husband, find my husband, find me a husband, whatever, close enough. Jenny Price, um, you know, I kid about this. We need more men in STS um, because then we really could um, do STS singles. You've all heard me uh, rant and rave about Coast to Coast, which is one of the weirdest shows on earth, and I'm weird, so I, I still listen to it. I listen to old episodes. It's Art Bell. Out. Yeah, Art Bell. And uh, they have literally like a – it's all about the paranormal. So they have like um, a paranormal dating service. But I just looked at Scott Duffy and had extreme anxiety and panic because he hasn't spoken in like 13 minutes. So Scott Duffy, back to this case, which is obviously what we're here for. STS singles might become a thing. Look at this. Um Mish Cavernos from Cape Town, South Africa, one of our OGs, uh, she said uh, very um, innocently, where do you even begin? Where do you even begin with this? So, Scott, let me ask you that question. I mean, I know you as, as investigators, you like to build timelines, right? Um, I heard one investigator this week tell me that he always starts a timeline like a week before an incident. 
Um, but where would you begin with this? You discover this car. Apparently, law enforcement and some family members kind of came on this car simultaneously. You're here. You're literally in Phil's old front yard. Uh, you can see his house back there on the horizon. That's his front yard. Um, it's great to play football there. Uh, they had some wild football games. But where do you start, Scott Duffy? Uh, this is in the middle of literally nowhere. Where do you begin? Hmm. My, so I have this nagging question, if I can ask, why is there a need for a stop sign there? I don't see anything. <laughs> that, <laughs> that would be my first question I have to get answered. It should be a I, yield. Probably a yield. arrive. Yeah. yeah, it's a good question. Yeah. And, and I'm making a. I'm making a poor assumption. I'm not, I'm not sure if that is a stop sign. It could be a railroad sign or <laughs> it looks like a stop sign. It looks like octagonal. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm a firm believer that, um, you know, investigations have to have, um, certain, uh, patterns of, of beginnings. Like, so for, so, so, Phil has done quite a bit, but the the most of his career is homicides. And and then, of course, he becomes a specialty in interviewing and to where other people learn of of his craft. And it is a craft that colleagues will say. Phil, come on in here and give me your thoughts and so forth, right? And so law enforcement, no matter where you're at and no matter what your specialty is, every agency, for the most part, has those built-in, um, I, I would say, experienced uh, investigators. And, and that comes, and so you can do drug work, homicide work, sexual crimes work, whatever it is, and, and you approach the scene, so to speak, and there may not be a scene in everything from, from that standpoint. So I'm looking at this and in every case, not only on the show, but that I see, I, I always go into my head and say, what would I do? Where, what would I start with? I would have my notepad and I'm constantly jotting down thoughts and questions for myself, questions that I'm going to ask myself, I need to have answered. And then of course, of people that who, who do I want to interview first? So there, you know, you're arriving here, me being from Wilmington and then, and, and then my patrol experience in lower Marion, this is foreign to me. But if all of a sudden I got put out there and say, Hey, Scott, you, you, um, you applied and, and you're our, our investigator, and now we're putting you on the scene because of your experience. I would say, "Wow, look at this place! I've never seen such a desolate." Um, okay, so I would probably be able to, in five seconds, do do a three sixty and say, "No camera is going to help me. Um, I can't see what's on the other side of this road from this camera shot, but." But that, you know, I'm always looking for cameras. And in Wilmington, we have a camera just about on every other street corner. So that it, it, I would first say, hey, where are the cameras? No cameras. Um, I would then look to see, you know, um, okay, this car, first and foremost, what is this car? Does law enforcement come upon it by accident or are they already aware of a bolo be on the lookout for a car because you have two missing women in said car and then an alert patrol or um, helicopter or low flying uh, law enforcement craft says, hey, there's a car there and it looks abandoned. Let's see if this is that car. So the the car is your starting point and, and then you work your way out. So what's in that car? What's around that car? Anything foreign to that car? For example, is there something else that doesn't look like it belonged to that car, right? And then it looks, you know, you're of course you have your crime scene people coming out to do anything with regards to, you know, tire tracks and possible blood and whatever else, fingerprints, because I I can't imagine that who if 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 
and what it sounds to be suspicious and thereby criminal behavior that um, who, in parentheses, S came showing a plurality of people to have taken over this car and then to have gotten these women out of the car without putting their DNA fingerprints on the car. So there, that car would be, to me, a trove of potential evidence. And, the, and, and then to, you know, figure out who, who the car belongs to, if they don't already know, and then to say what, you know, I would start working. Yeah, in my it, is, it is, it is Veronica's car, the younger woman, uh, yeah. the younger mom. So it's her car. And by the way, Scott Duffy, I, I didn't mean to interrupt, but um, Dilly Pickles, who's from this area says that the 360 view that you alluded to, it looks exactly like this, but says that there could be every once in a while, some traffic here on, uh, on 95. Um, I kind of love this comment from Wild Irish Rose. Bill and his pointing finger when he talks reminds me of the nuns in Catholic school. Uh, I don't know why I am not T-Pain, but this this I visualize this as a potential meme. Um, and uh, Phil, Scott and I were talking about putting some of these memes. We're, we're, re, we're revamping the uh, merch store. So maybe we'll get some of these. Certainly uh, you're, you're panties in a wad uh, that has to be a shirt we'll, we'll turn some of these memes into sh into shirts for the sts uh community daddy short nuts has um a piece of advice for scott duffy here um start interviewing the wildlife uh that's pretty much uh here it appears that you're gonna maybe get them to talk uh, laura quigley sts has the best guess there's no doubt about that so um again filling in some of the blanks here th this uh spokesperson uh, for the OSBI says, because there is now he's openly admitting it because, uh, Phil Waters, there is foul play involved in this case. We are doing what we can to identify possible suspects. Then if anything changes in regards to that, we are specifically, uh, that we are specifically looking for, we will let the public know this is extremely sad and extremely unfortunate. We're hoping to find out what happened here very soon. Now, a uh, family has been outspoken saying, only to say, Phil Waters, that law enforcement has asked family and friends in this small community not to speak to the media. They have specifically said that, uh, which I think you would agree with. Something we don't know, were cell phones left behind in the car or not? We just don't know. Uh, that, I assume, is information Phil would agree with that you don't want released because um, a true suspect would know that. Um, someone who doesn't would might not know that. But now we're getting into the meat and potatoes here, and this involves some court uh, documentation and uh, other things. But Veronica Butler, again, let's put the photos up, uh, and this has some information. Uh, Veronica Butler on the left here, uh, 27 years old. Um, sh she has two kids, so obviously there's a father uh, responsible for those two children, and it turns out his name is Cole Rickman. He's a cattle wrangler. Uh, not a lot of cattle wranglers in Miami, but plenty out in Oklahoma. And uh, she's been in a custody bat battle with his family. So this is where it gets interesting, Phil. There was a motion filed in Cimarron County Court in Oklahoma last November, so a few months back, uh, that Tiffany Adams, she is the children's paternal grandmother. She is this guy, uh, Cole Rickman's mother. So Cole Rickman's mother, Tiffany Adams. Um, in a motion filed uh, last November, Tiffany Adams, the children's paternal grandmother, opposed any adjustment in a supervised vi visitation arrangement that Veronica had with the children. And she went on to say that the children, six and nine, were exposed to sexual abuse under Veronica's care. And when you read deeper into the court documents, you find out that they're claiming that Veronica's brother was sexually abusing these children. Phil Waters, no investigator has more experience. Well, the 57-year guy has more experience than you. But um, when you're going through your uh, files here, your, your, your information, and you come upon this, this uh, nugget of information. By the way, Phil's going back to Hawaii in just a month's time, and we are going to get to see Nugget. I cannot wait. Uh, the movement continues, free nugget. But Phil Waters, you're working this case, and now you find out that there is this uh, horrific custody battle going on with accusations of sexual abuse. What do you do next? 
Well, this is a case, like all cases, where you peel back the onion on everybody involved and you start to find out what brought these folks to that location and, and what was the background. There's always a backstory that's no different here. And so the information that you have here. So my, my question is, just knowing what we know, is so Veronica did not have custody of these children or child. And it, the, it was it was the mother. It was the grandmother. The grandmother. The grandmother is Correct. the paternal grandmother. The father, the mother of the father, is adamantly opposed, if I understood what you just said, to changing any arrangements about the supervised visits between Veronica and the child because of what you just said. That, and this is, I didn't know this until you read it, that supposedly, uh, her brother was sexually abusing the, the child. So, uh, boy, there's a lot of moving parts here in something like this. You got a lot of emotion. You got a lot of family members in opposition to one another. And it's uh, and driven by a child. So this is, this is the perfect storm for something like this to have happened if both of these women were harmed abducted and there is uh, this uh, suspicious uh, signs at the scene at the car and uh, a possibility of foul play so um you've got to go you know it, it's back to the timeline that, that you've talked about you've got to go back prior to get the history of why they're even going to this location so once you've determined all of that, then you've got a better idea about why they were there. And again, members of the SDS nation that live in that area, live in Hugoton and, and know uh, Jillian. She was, uh, I've read over here where she was a uh, an approved uh, person to go to these supervised visits. And that's how she gets involved in this thing. Now, I'm, I'm assuming that what these folks are saying is accurate, but it's pretty obvious that she was there in support of Veronica. And um, so, again, it goes back to who were they meeting? When were they supposed to meet? I mean, were they supposed to be meeting the was this arrangement something that changed? And that's why the the because uh, you were talking about these court proceedings and that this this grandmother is opposed to making any changes. Was she the one that was bringing the child to the look? I mean, so all of these questions, OSBI is getting answered. And I think it and, and you just mentioned that the OSBI has instructed family members to keep their mouths shut. I think that is wonderful. Hmm. And and I'm sure that. Media people being what they are, they are they're banging on the doors of those family members trying to get them to speak, I would imagine, because that's what they do. They locate these folks and they start peppering them with a bunch of trying to get them on a camera somewhere. And it, it, to this point, it sounds like that the family members are abiding by what OSBI has instructed them not to do. So. I think that part of it's great as well, but um, you know, you you you've got to know the history of everybody here to understand the mechanics of what what may have happened, what happened. Yeah, uh, Dilly Pickles. Uh, Cole is his middle name. I forget the uh, the actual legal first name. Uh, good grandma here. There are people in the chat from this area. We live in cattle country out here. Dodge, Garden, Liberal, Elkhart, and Hugoton. Uh, this is literally the heart of the country. Um, so, uh, there you go. Um, and then you find out here, this is from news nation. Obviously this is a view of the area just to show you the wind blowing through the plains there. Wow. This is as American as America gets, uh, the plains. Um, and there you go. Not a lot of action, not a lot of cars. Um, 
definitely a different kind of lifestyle growing up there than uh, I'm accustomed to, or, you know, most people who don't live in, in the middle of the country like this um, are accustomed to, but great shot there, uh, COE. Thank you for that. So Scott Duffy, um, always um, aware and concerned about your, um, your verbal exchanges on the show. So I don't get yelled at, but Phoebe, the grandmother even denied the father visitation, according to Phoebe. Uh, what we come to find out is that this father, who I'm going to call Cole Rickman, I don't know the, uh, I, I, I had the first name somewhere. By the way, also a huge shout out to the Christian Post. Uh, didn't know it existed, the Christian Post, but they do are doing amazing uh, re reporting on this. Um, Wrangler Cole Rickman is the father, yes, of Veronica's children, Tiffany Adams, is his mother and current guardian uh, correct? Uh, so that's what we just went through. Now, uh, we find out that the, the, the child's father, Cole Rickman, Scott Duffy, that we find out that he um, is a drug addict. Um, he has, and I quote here from a court motion, he has no interest in caring for his children. So he basically uh, said, my mom is going to watch the kids. Uh, he had just gotten out of jail, too, by the way, uh, on a firearms charge, already being a convicted felon. And he was ordered into court drug treatment. And according to reports, um, he was put into that court order drug treatment um, on. And there you see some of it here in this document. Um, I want to say on March 22nd, and he used to have no contact. 30 days and had to be there for six months, but no contact for the first 30 days. So if you do the math and he was really in there on March 22nd, um, I don't think it's possible that he's a suspect unless we find out he wasn't there. That's a big piece of the puzzle. Is it not Scott Duffy? Oh, absolutely. He he's, he's, um, and, and any domestic child custody, you know, you, you're going to go to the inner circle, which is the the ex or soon to be ex, whatever his current title is. He's number one suspect if they have a crime, right? And so thereby knock him out of the picture early. And so you can now be looking at other aspects. So that that should be relatively easy for law enforcement to go in, verify, and and verification beyond a reasonable doubt, be just no doubt whatsoever that he uh, checked himself in, that, that um, not only witness accounts, video, whatever it is that will be able to make law enforcement say he didn't go out the back door after he checked himself into a room because maybe there's no sense of security or whatever, all that would be um, confirmed. And if law enforcement goes in and does their job, which I imagine has already been done, they will be able to say he himself uh, did not do this because he couldn't be at two places at once. That's ultimately what an alibi, you can't be at two places at once. So if there are any loopholes, well, nobody really saw him. He's not on camera. Yes, he signed in, but you know, people come and go. Sure, sure. That's then it 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 doesn't knock him out of the picture. Law enforcement wants to be zoning in on their suspect, not be distracted by, well, we couldn't knock somebody out of the investigation, so we could zone in on somebody else. So though that but but it should be relatively simple to be able to confirm that he's physically somewhere else. So he could not be part of anything that had to do with um, these women being missing physically. What I mean physically is that he himself physically was not a part of it. Uh, this gets, you know, crazier and crazier. So Tiffany Adams, the mother of Cole Rickman, who's the father of these children, um, she was a petitioner in this court document, and, and it, it reads, I'm going to read this directly, petitioner appears to be capitalizing on the indifference, Mr. Rickman. So this is the mom capitalizing on the indifference that the dad has shown for his own children. 
Mr. Rickman has removed himself from the children's lives. Instead of being a father, he now seeks out the pleasures of drinking alcohol, using drugs, and other degenerate behavior. So this this shows you a glimpse into this um, dynamic where the mother appears disgusted at her own son's behavior. Um, and it, it just cont continues on here. Um, what's even more troubling and uh, upsetting, Phil Waters, is uh, Veronica Butler herself then accused Cole Rickman um, of sexual abuse of these children at one point in these court documents. So now, now you have both sides saying that the other side is involved or responsible for the sexual abuse of children. But again, this father, as far as we know, and, and I don't think it's been 100% proven yet, is supposed to be in this court-ordered rehab. So where do you go from there? Well, Scott's already mentioned. I mean, the fact that he wasn't, all the evidence shows that he wasn't physically there doesn't mean he didn't have knowledge about what was going to happen or what has happened. So, you know, you've got, again, you've got a lot of moving parts here. Um, if the, if the grandmother who is fighting this thing and she has full custody, um, she's the one that's got the most to lose here. And so, uh, now we're getting into this, you know, he said, she said, nanny, nanny, poo, poo, you know, blah, blah, blah. Here we go. And this is not, this is no big revelation in the court documents where now Veronica's accusing and so forth. And, you know, they're doing this. So this is not uncommon, the whole thing. What this is explaining to me, all these court documents that are coming up about this, this custody issue and, and uh, she's going back in and trying to get custody and so forth and so on. And all these issues that are being brought up now in these court documents. Um, what it's indicating to me is the reasons why these two women are missing. So, you know, we, we, wanted, we just don't know where they are. We don't know where they are or who did this and the OSBI guys are on it and they may know they may have a suspect, a possible suspect here or suspects. And they're just like, it's they're moving very methodically because what's the goal? The goal is to find these women and find them alive. Uh, and, that's what they're trying to achieve here and hoping and praying. It just doesn't turn into a recovery. Uh, Dilly Pickles says now sometimes people are released and are uh, to report to treatment on their own accord. We're, we're learning. Uh, the only way we are learning that he is Scott in this court ordered rehab is from his mother. Um, so, there's an uh, independent reporter who, who I happen to know of. I don't know her personally. Her name is Lauren Conlin, Lauren Conlin, and she does really good reporting independently. Um, and, and she says that um, he obviously was supposed to be in this court ordered uh, rehab. The mother is claiming that he was there, but I don't think anyone else has publicly said that. Um, but she is reporting as well that Veronica Butler, this mother, was extremely scared of the of of the Wranglers, of the baby daddy's mother. So Veronica Butler is now fearful of Tiffany Adams. That is the baby daddy's mother. This is grandma. So she's afraid of grandma. Um, how closely do you need to look at grandma now? Oh, uh, Every everybody in that inner circle is is a suspect until they're no longer a suspect. So Phil said, what is the motive? What 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 does somebody have to gain? As as we're talking and um hearing that the unfortunate thing, but I've seen it far too many times in my career when I speak to 
drug addiction, drug addicted individuals who also happen to be parents that their kids are not their, their priority. Drug is the priority. It's, it's, it's tough to accept, but it's the reality of how bad a, a drug addiction can be. So if, so for, if the father is so addicted that he's making choices and putting it all out there that his kids are not his priority and they are not his priority, right? Not only does he say it, but, but everything he does, um, supports that then what, you know, what is the reason to, to, um, to get rid of the mother aspect of a custody issue, right? It's, and, and if he doesn't want custody, so, so those things do play into all this. It makes it somewhat complicated, but law enforcement piece by piece will look, will have their list. Who's number one, number two, number three, number four, who may go up that list, go down that list. And so the, it, it absolutely would, people are going to offer not only what they believe, but some sort of credible statements to, to offer to law enforcement to say, hey, don't forget about looking at grandma, the in-law, because of what um, uh, has been said to me by Veronica over a period of time. So law enforcement can then, you know, say, well, okay, there's a greater motive to to ensure that that she will no longer be a part. Um, so let's look at her whereabouts, etc. And it may very well just come down to conversation. Hey, want to talk to you, you know, your whereabouts. The the ultimately it comes down to what what's my level of cooperation? So am I going to cooperate with law enforcement? I want to do everything. You're going to see the open hands. What do you need? Do you want to look at my phone? You want to look at my computer? I'll tell you where I was. I have witnesses. I'll take a polygraph. I am 100% cooperative. So you can start looking the right way, wherever that may lead law enforcement. So I would say that inner circle, whoever is one, two, three, four, five, however many that could have uh, a potential to this investigation. Law enforcement interviewing, looking at their backgrounds and, and either taking them off the list and then to say, okay, uh, have we taken out the domestic part of this and now start to look elsewhere, which nobody likes, that outer, totally unknown, random act, et cetera. Mm. Uh, always an amazing breakdown from Phil and Scott. A couple more questions on this, so we'll pivot to some of the wild stories of the week. But, um, Phil, I'm afraid to ask this question. This question was asked in the chat, and uh, people might have to uh, earmuff themselves because I'm sort of an idiot, And I, but I want to ask Phil this. But a couple people asked if there are pig farms nearby, and the reason I'm asking is I was literally just watching – it's a good show. It's a Spanish show on Netflix called Reign of Something, R-E-I-G-N. And in a scene, they are getting rid of a body and they feed it to pigs. Will pigs fill waters? Is this something you just see in the movies or is this a reality uh, that pigs would literally, uh, God forbid something happens to these women, could eliminate human remains by virtue of eating them is that is that something that is uh part of reality well i i would imagine i don't really know what the menu of pigs is but i, I don't think uh uh i that would not be far-fetched of course you i mean it wouldn't be you just you just chunk a body into it and the pigs come and eat it but uh you'd have to do some dismembering and that kind of thing and mix it into the slop and and I would imagine those pigs would consume it. Uh, that that's not. I don't think that's too far from reality. Mm. Uh, look at this. But I would, let, me, let me say something about yeah. what what the law enforcement has released. And this this to me, from an investigative standpoint, is significant because they have said that there is that they believe that there is no danger to the public. The minute 
something like that comes out, that gives you a pretty good picture of where their range of possible suspects is headed. So when they tell you that, you know, the lockdown of the school and all that, I think that was just, uh, you know, just a cautionary move. Mm -hmm. But the OSBI, the spokesperson for the OSBI, came out a couple of days ago and said that there's no no threat. They believe there's no threat to the public. Yeah. So, um, uh, you know, that and that and that's important. In that you have got to part of this is uh, you've got to. Uh, you've got to allay the fears of the general population, the general public, so that they're not looking over their shoulder that this is some random act. And uh, that is important to, because anytime something like this happens, there's an immediate yeah. uh, stress factor and anxiety factor that the public feels jumping like that. So, well, Phil, that was, that was a follow-up question. So this is, uh, you know, all joking aside, a heavily traveled uh, interstate, uh, 95. So um, what if, you know, switching gears, everyone's looking at, you know, family and family dynamics and the custody issues. There is a possibility, because you say anything is possible until you get to the evidence, that a trucker was driving by and maybe something nefarious happened with the trucker. You're, you're, you're waving me off, Phil. How come? Hmm, look at well, this. he's disgusted with me. It's 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 not a it's not an interstate highway. It's State Road 95 in the oh. Panhandle of Oklahoma, and we've already seen it. And Scott's already questioning the one stop sign that seems to be standing there. So uh, that 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 uh, scenario, I guess it's possible. You could say anything's possible, but I would have to say, based on the evidence that we know now, it is not probable. Hmm. So I, I, I just, you, you know, whoever ever comes up with the mystery trucker that snatched two women up just happened to be there at the moment. Uh, no, I, that's not where the evidence le is leading in any way, shape, or form. So we have, I didn't realize the COE had this in here. I never would have known if she didn't let me know. Let's listen to a piece of sound. This is from, I think, the OSB, uh, OSBI. Let's listen to this. We're investigating this as everything is on the table. Um, we are hopeful that they are still alive, but we're going to do everything in our power to to track these these two people down as quickly as we can. Uh, that's one bite from Hunter McKee. This guy's got a great jawline. Here's uh, bite number two. Unknown is what has created it uh, suspicious for us at this time. Sheriff's office deputies approach the vehicle and these women are, are gone and they're nowhere to be seen. That's it. They just vanish seemingly into uh, thin air. Again, uh, this I, wonder, I wonder if he's uh, another one of Arnold Schwarzenegger's love children. <laughs> it looks like he could be. He could <laughs> Everything comes up on this show. That's another. Um, that, that one shot, that first shot, uh, man, that's what struck me that. Uh, I don't man, know. You know, um, everything we, we cover everything here and uh, Kindred Spirits Investigations will look into this to try to figure out <laughs> if this man is Arnold Schwarzenegger's love son. On the table. Um, we are hopeful. That Very similar mouth alive, and jaw. But we're going to do. I'm just saying. Caroline, the whole thing. These, these two people down as quickly as we can. We will now refer to him as Hunter Schwarzenegger instead of Hunter <laughs> McKee. Um, so. This independent reporting um, from Lauren Conlin, it goes on, and we're going to put a bow on this in a moment. Uh, the grandmother, again, she is the one who is saying that her uh, son, Cole Rickman, has not had any contact because he's been in rehab, This that he's, in fact, been in rehab this whole time. Uh, she also confirms that the children are safe. Grandma says the children are safe. Now, there have been posts um, on Facebook and other social media outlets from friends and family. This is a very uh, religious part of uh, Oklahoma uh, and Kansas, a lot of God-fearing people. And they say, please keep praying for the safe return of Veronica and Jillian. They're still out there someone, uh, somewhere. Keep praying for both families. They need them. Um, and on it goes here. But um, a true uh, mystery that all of a sudden uh, they just 
vanish into thin air. Scott Duffy, will this ultimately, in your opinion, be solved? Um, it's it's a, it's wide open land here. This is wide open land, but uh, you know it's a small, relatively small community. So, will this be solved, uh, Scott? And if you're wrong, we will hold you to it. Yeah. So, this did. Define solved. In other words, will they find the two women? Yes. But have no no criminal, you know, process. I, will, will the women be uh, found, whether it's alive or a recovery? Do you think they will be found? Yeah, I, 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 I can only hope and pray. But, but I, I would say, um, not having stats before me, but I, I've, I've heard of stats in the past of the staggering amount of people who are missing that remain missing um so you know my hope is absolutely yes and just like hunter schwarzenegger said uh to be found alive um but you know the the the, the clock is ticking so i we they know hopefully they know that whatever mechanism they have in place that uh, uh, perhaps a motive that will lead to okay, we these women were taken and and they're being held somewhere, as opposed to whatever they found at the scene and and um, and if, if there's a significant blood loss that if they're not receiving some sort of medical help, you know they're up against the clock. So, um, on on this one, I can only say I hope and pray, but but. Um, it's it, it will be there are too many factors that are just not known yet um so yeah uh, we, will, we, will, we will we will see uh if you're from a, an exotic locale make it known in chat i'll scroll down because i'm compiling a list of different places people are from in today's uh afternoon chat here uh eastern time on the eastern seaboard of the united states of america uh, CB CBO here. This is a disturbing uh, but relevant comment. Robert Picton told the officer he had murdered 49 women. He wanted to make it 50. The pig farm became the largest crime scene in Canadian history, followed by this comment. I'm going to have nightmares tonight. They do eat bone. My uncle has a pig farm, about 2,000 pigs. Uh, they definitely eat bone a uh, good grandma here look at the coe she just pulled this up right before me i just wonder about the long hauler trucks of cattle pigs our other was hauling other things that's our scare out here a uh, super sticker from uh, the good grandma uh thanks for uh filling in some of the blanks today good grandma love to have you on we're gonna stay on this case uh can't help but wonder what art bell would think i'd be afraid to know what he'd think about this but this is Kind of a haunting story. I mean, literally in the middle of the plains, uh, sort of between uh, major cities in the middle of nowhere in the heartland of America. And um, and there you go. Uh, this crazy, crazy um, disappearance. And hopefully we get some answers. I just saw Norway, so I'm trying to add it to my list, which is why I'm distracted for a moment. But now on to uh, true stories, true crime stories of the week. Uh, the first one, Phil Waters. This is disturbing. It's a teenage girl. You may have heard of this. She was kidnapped by her father in San, Bern San, San Bernardino County, California. She's captured by her father, who had killed the mother. And uh, it's literally a situation where I think he is holding her and authorities from San Bernardino Sheriff's Department. They descend on this scene. They can see her. They can see um, the father grabbing Savannah, uh, 15 years old. And they say to her, uh, get out. It's in a car. They say several times, come here. And then they just open fire and they kill this girl. Um, and people are outraged that uh, these deputies did that. Uh, they're outraged. She was in a car. They say that they didn't need to fire on the car. Um, I know you don't know all the, all the details, but <clears throat> your, uh, your gut response to this. 
well, no matter what the reasons were why they fired a horrible, horrible tragedy. Having said that, I never pass judgment until I know what the full scope of the investigation reveals about why those officers fired at the time that they fired. And mm. uh, so I'm going to do the same thing here. Well, here's, here, here's a, here, hang on one sec, Phil. This is a very interesting point. I didn't miss this the first go around. San Bernardino County Sheriff Shannon Dykus said after the shootout, this is interesting, after the shootout that Savannah was wearing tactical gear and started running toward deputies. The sheriff also noted at the time it was possible Savannah participated in the shootout, though there's nothing seen or heard in the recently released audio and video that indicates she did. Now, the father had just killed the mother, so there's a curveball for you, right? I'm just going to tell you, I'm not going to make any judgments based on some video and a bunch of people screaming about how horrific police officers are. So, you know, again, I've worked officer-involved shootings where officers have been killed in the line of duty, and I've worked where they have killed suspects in the line of duty. So I'm just saying there's always more to the story. And, you know, and, and I, so the San Bernardino Sheriff's Office did the opposite of what the OSBI is doing. And these, these departments around the country have gotten caught up in this where they're releasing these videos. I, I just, it just astounds me. These videos in these incidents are evidence. Why in the world you release this stuff to the general public to do what? Transparency? For crying out loud, you're compromising the investigation. You're already getting people stirred up because they don't understand what happened at the scene. They're only watching these videos. And these videos are a snapshot of a bigger picture. And it just it just it it just riles me when when something like this happens and every, and of course the media we need the video we need it. and these departments are releasing this stuff for what for what purpose to appease people it, it never works that way never so uh, again I'm not going to pass any judgment I wasn't there at the scene those officers saw something that they read as a potential threat. And there's nothing in any street survival training, any tactical training by law with law enforcement that says you've got to get shot first before you respond. Mm. If you recognize a threat, you have to terminate the threat. Mm. And if what was going on there caused them to make that decision, then that's what we need to know. And that will be revealed at the end of the investigation. And I will tell you, even if it is, even if it is, if that's a circumstance, there will be people that will still not be satisfied. So I, I'm just I'm just saying that folks that have never worn the badge and been in those situations, they need to hold their freaking water and wait till the end of the investigation. And they're going to be told what happened and why it happened. And if there was something wrong that law enforcement did that was criminal in nature, then they're going to be held accountable. If there was something that was not criminal in nature and it was a result of a lack of training, then that will be resolved as well. But... This, the, these kinds of incidents where the first thing the agency wants to do is release this stuff is just amazing to me. I saw this at HPD sometimes when you would have body cam video that the families would be brought to the chief's office and shown the body cam video. And it is clear in the body cam video what their relative did that caused them to be killed by law enforcement mm -hmm. and they still didn't believe it yeah. still didn't believe it and they're seeing it and they still didn't believe it mm -hmm. so i'm just telling you 
you know, it, I do. I do get my panties in a wad when this kind of stuff uh, well, gets I, I released understand. and people are all, you know, blah, blah, blah. And everybody's upset and all that good stuff. It's just nonsense. I understand. Uh, Diana Johnson here says, uh, this is a $10 super uh, chat. Father started shooting first at the officers. The girl had um, a helmet on. So there you go. We're, we started with breaking news of the earthquake and I lost the comment. I had it up uh, prior. Uh, the COE put this up, but I think it was from Dilly Pickles. They're getting word in that part of Oklahoma that there was a possible arrest made this morning. So um, once we get off of here, there could very well be another update. The latest update that we played, the, the sound bites of Arnold Schwarzenegger's uh, son, um, otherwise known as Hunter McKee, uh, that was from yesterday. That was the most recent um, update that we got about this case of the missing moms. But maybe there'll be news one way or the other uh, later today. So I think it was Rock Chalk. Um, just rumors. STS did not independently confirm that. Correct. This is coming, though. Uh, in the chat from people who live in that area, in that specific area. So uh, let me let me say one more thing about the, do. The, de the deputy shooting, the San Bernardino please, shooting. Please do. So if you see the headline, it's a picture of the girl when she was at a pool party. You know, I mean, they've got this picture of this lovely girl up there. Not saying that she wasn't, but I mean, they, they pre present this picture. And then what does it say? What's the headline? The headline of this story, uh, I don't think yeah. I have the headline, but it I, I don't know. I, I just have the information. I do not have the headline, I don't think. Well, it's something along the line of deputy shoot daughter while she's running from the car. But it was it was a yeah. statement of fact without telling the truth. And this mm. is what the media does all the time. So they they run that that headline up there, that byline up there. And what is the reason they're doing that? Joel, you're a you're a journal, you're a true journalist, you're a media guy. Why do they put a headline like that up there that's a statement of fact, but it does not tell the truth? Because they're under it's funny. I mean, I was I was poking fun at New York media, but there is so much pressure. A new I, I once was having a conversation. He was the president. Okay, Joel, I need you to focus here. I need you to answer my question. Oh, why sorry. do they do that? Um Man, if I yeah, there you go. The COE just answered it. Sensationalism sells. There's a there's there a lot you of go. Pressure. There you yeah. go. Man, I, I would fold in the interview room. Words. I love what? a woman of few words. Thank you, COE. That's if, exactly why they do it. It's all about clicks and it's all about people. Look, read, and then when you read the article in all of in in almost all of it, it's no, it's nothing what the what the headline says. So, uh, yeah, clickbait, I guess that's what they call it, right? I literally, my heart rate just jumped and I'm sweating because Phil just interviewed me. I would fold like a lawn chair in one second. I'd be like, I did it. I did it. I did it. One follow up. Phil raised his voice a little bit and I was like, oh, shit, I couldn't even think. All right. Um, Scott, did you enjoy that exchange? We may have to play that. We may have to play that. At the symposium, <laughs> yeah, I love that, that. That we're going to be at together. I'm literally, my years. arm is sweating from that. Um, my right arm. I'm not a sweater <laughs> easy either, but okay. ask for a lawyer. Ask yeah, for a lawyer. Joel. Seriously, that's a first. Hey, this is a non-custodial <laughs> interview. You know, I appreciate you. Uh, <laughs> you're not under arrest. You're not in custody, and you're free to turn this thing off anytime you want, Joel. <laughs> uh, all right, moving on here. This story could disturb a lot of people. Um. <laughs> In India and a father, Scott Duffy, and this is a bigger question of what's wrong with humanity. He's now going to serve jail time. I'm warning you, this is a little disturbing. After he reportedly bit his newborn daughter, uh, he injured her, takes her to the doctor, to the hospital, and they find teeth marks. And he's a, um, he's questioned about it. And he says, um, and I quote, his baby daughter was ungrateful. Um, his name is Gavin Rogers. He pleaded guilty to domestic battery resulting in bodily injury. I'm looking for uh, the age of the baby, and I just found it. Two-week-old baby, Scott Duffy, and uh, he is now, uh, they found mouth-shaped bruises and teeth marks on shoulder, forearm, stomach, knee, and leg. 
Uh, this might sound controversial. Um, I probably shouldn't say what I'm about to say, um, but this guy should probably be fed to a, uh, what do you call a lot of pigs? A herd of pigs? Um, but he should be fed to a lot of pigs. Scott Duffy, wh what is the matter with human beings that they're biting their own children multiple times? Uh, is there any way to wrap your head around this? No, it just you, you're just reinforcing the the depravity of humanity sometimes and and what goes against all thoughts of here not not only and and it didn't matter once you said baby i who cares what a hitch it's just the fact that you know uh, this guy is claiming his baby's ungrateful at two yeah, two weeks yeah. old not two years yeah. old by the way uh congrats yeah. to leah simpson she lets us know omg i have a two-week-old baby this is sick uh yes it is um when you first started down that i was i was let my mind go into a happy place mm, that yeah. it was like an Olympic uh, getting up and receiving your gold medal. And you, you gently bite down on the gold medal. That's where I thought you were going with this beautiful story. Look what I have achieved in life. Love my baby. Ah, love you. <laughs> but mm. no, you, you went down a deep, dark path. Yeah. yeah. It's, it, it's, it's, um, you know, there. I, I would like to see what the jail time. That's in it. That's um, that's that's very depraved, very serious. It goes to show what this person was willing to do. That um, you know, at 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 uh, attempt murder. Um, I I would like to see that that this you know unfortunate but two week old child. I don't know who else is in the child's life, but. That, I, that, I just that hope that this dad. kid is taken away from the dad because uh Medium. man, yeah. When when you when when you people have different uh starts in life, and this poor little baby, two weeks old, uh has a bad start. Um and hopefully uh how any fa let alone any person, but a father could do that to their two week old child. Um horrific. On to a slightly more fun story. I chose this for Phil Waters, so I think we'll get a kick out of it. So this is New York City, Phil Waters, Queens, one of the five boroughs of New York City. Uh, this guy is a sneaker collector. Uh, he is a, his name is Carlos Mejia. He's also a plumber, working hard, making an honest living in Richmond Hill, Queens. Well, he's a sneaker collector, and this porch pirate was stealing all his sneakers, so in New York City fashion, he said, I have an idea. And he set up a decoy package, and it was filled with dog crap, uh, this decoy package. And he waited. He filled the sneaker box because this guy was taking the boxes and allegedly opening them and then running off with the sneakers. He opens the box, can't believe what he's found. Uh, the smell gets to him. He's stunned, and uh, Carlos Mejia, who's a large man himself, jumps out and collars this criminal. Uh, he was trying to steal. Uh, he had previously stolen a pair of $250 Air Jordans. Um, he held him down until, the, until New York's finest got there, the NYPD, and they arrested this guy. Um, and that's how that story goes. But he used... The old poop in the shoebox to startle this man. Uh, your thoughts on this, Phil Waters? That's pretty. That's that's uh, pretty creative. Uh, good for him. It, I guess it accomplished the the goal. Hundred, right? one hundred of over a hundred of his packages have been had been stolen by this person. So he's pissed. Yes, he is. And he resolved that. Uh, with boxes of crap. Yes. Well, I think that's wonderful. That's uh, good for him. And he, he put a UPS sticker on there to make it look real. And the the UPS sticker said F U, but he spelled it out. So, well, let's hope he doesn't get in, tr in trouble with UPS for uh, misrepresenting uh, their company. Uh, in 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 our woke world, that is a definite possibility. You never know. But uh, that's a very New York story. And, uh, you know, it's a little different. Um, this one, fascinating to me. Scott Duffy, this is your world. 
what we're about to delve into. This is your world. San Fernando Valley, Easter Sunday. Most people like you and Phil are at mass. Um, I'm still thinking about the guy that's retired at 38. Uh, people are doing different things. Uh, and someone in the San Fernando Valley breaks into um, a cash and delivery service company called Garda. You've seen them probably. They uh, they drive around in uh, armored cars uh, with the it says Garda on there. It's a big it's a big company, national company. They they're they're a armored car company. Whoever did this stole thirty million dollars in cash from this building uh, on Easter Sunday, and uh, there is no sign of them. Um, the belief is it was it wasn't discovered till the next day. Again, the company is Garda World. It's a security and cash company. This is the largest heist in LA history. Uh, there was one in the '90s where they stole twenty million in cash. Uh, this is the direct quote from an unnamed employee at Garda World. It says thirty million dollars in the valley is gone. How? Why? I'm still trying to process it. Was it an inside job? Was it just one person? Was it a group? You know, there's a lot of questions. And when you see the video, there's a hole in the side of the building that is now patched up. Uh, they tried to go in that way. They couldn't. And then they went in through the roof. Uh, Scott Duffy, I don't need to tell you 30 million bucks. You and I can retire on that money. Like my 38 year old friend, you can retire on that. Um, what happened here? Did this have to be an inside job? Where do you begin? Yeah, so Wilmington being the financial district, mm -hmm. some would, would say for the world, but um some some so, don't know this, Scott. It's uh it's like the insurance. Is is it like an insurance hub? Is there insurance or banks? Well, or it's what? also where I would say most of any company in the world mm -hmm. somehow is incorporated, even the WWE. So if there's gonna be some lawsuit. Um, it would typically happen in the uh, in the courts of Delaware because that's where they're incorporated. It's a um, it's so I've dealt with that a lot. And then Garda, which I've also dealt with, has a nice hub in um, in in Wilmington. So it would be hard pressed for me not to think, you know, just like a domestic, you start <laughs> inner circle local. I would be starting inner inner workings because um so i've been to these money rooms and they are nondescript buildings but they were fortresses i've seen what mm. what uh what's inside that's and exactly I'm, this building this building looks like just a warehouse you would never know just plain walls all around yeah i've it's it is amazing when you realize that you start to walk around um I would go and what I would say, some of our poorer sections, I would see these, these standalone brick buildings typically, and they would either be have millions and millions of dollars of gold, um, or they would be a money room, a money center for Garda uh, or another armed car services. And, and I would get these tours as an FBI agent to, to see what I would be up against if in fact, they were uh there was ever burglary or robbery so i have i have seen uh money bags walk off the truck you know not 250 500 thousand and it would be gone and um i i will also say that when when we have identified a suspect and that suspect was somewhat of of an insider that um it, it wasn't as easy to hard press them or I had to press them a little hard to prosecute because, you know, when you are the protector of somebody's wealth mm. and then and it walks away a little too easy, they don't want that out there. And Interesting. Um, so it was my it was my education into into the uh, armed car world. And so. I wow. I would be addressing the same somebody on the inside, um, former employee or not, yeah. um, assisted. Well, that someone asked. Nice yeah, they asked them, someone in the chat. A few people said, "Aren't there cameras mm -hmm. everywhere?" Where, according to the story, 
whoever did this, did this without tripping any alarms or causing any noticeable damage to the outside of the safe. Scott, could it be anything but an inside job? Wouldn't you have to know how to not trip an alarm? I mean, this sounds, um, and then how do you systematically go through this? How do you systematically do this? How do you go through this to yeah. figure out your suspect? Um, so if, if it's not quickly to, and, to, and I will say too, you rely upon the business. So here Garter to say, who is your number one suspects? They know who, who they're looking at. They, I would start with my most recent firing suspensions, let go. Um, but, uh, I, I, I have dealt with, um, businesses that have lost something that can only have been lost by an inside job. And, uh, I've had to interview up to 250 people, each and every one systematically, and then to end with, um, are you willing to take a polygraph? And if I could arrange it, would you take it today? And that, uh, you know, to to try to get rid of the inside job, and then and then you you narrow down that huge packet to to a you know a controllable list of suspects. Scott Duffy, uh, let me interject for one moment. How thirty million in cash? How yeah. how many suitcase? What do you need for that? How much space does that occupy? I I I don't I couldn't really tell you. I, I will mean, it say would depend that, on the denominations, but yeah, well, it, it would depend on the denominations. It would, you know, it is amazing, especially. Um, you know, when you see these, if, if they're, if it's all dollar, uh, well, being a hundred dollar bills or whatever, as opposed to some sort of bullion and coins, um, that, uh, you, you can, you know, you can shrink it. It's amazing. If so, for example, a hundred dollar bills, what, you know, to, to see packets and the way they package it and, or shrink wrap it and whatnot, to to see how how but could uh, one person take thirty million in cash? Can one person physically carry that? No, I, I I would find that very difficult unless unless they said they were in the building for quite a few hours. But it's heavy and and it's multiple. So you're either going to be making many many trips to wherever you're transporting <laughs> that, and um, you know, but but like I I'm just trying to. What I remember of of armed car jobs, where a bag would either be taken forcibly or a bag walk off. In other words, through an inside job, and and I would say, educate me. What's a what's a bag? And it it would be, um, you know, probably like my torso from head to tor to my torso, and be like, that's a bag, and it's a it's a it's a good size bag, and that could carry um, easily two hundred fifty thousand. That's what's going into the ATMs. And um, and so imagine 30 million. Um, mm. But if you're not dealing with 20s uh, uh, and 10s, typical ATM, you're dealing with, you know, what was taken would be would be a key, what they knew what to take quickly. Um, but yeah, bypassing systems and whatnot, it's it would be I, I know they're a professional, very good professional burglars out there who have bypassed systems, but they're usually cutting everything. They're going through the roof. Um, and uh, I, I, I just don't oh. see them. Frankie Fig says that she would like to try to carry 30 million in cash out. And Phoebe wants, do you have know. any, Scott Duffy, any idea of the estimated weight? Look at this. Yeah. Tommy, uh, I don't know how he figured this out. The Tommy Bernhard podcast. There you go. 661 pounds. If it's all $100 bills, that's interesting. Who the hell, how can you calculate that? What a, what a interesting, what a, this guy's Einstein. Can you literally Google how much does 30 million in cash weigh? I'm sure you can. That's probably what he did. Um, well, I just Googled the 30 million in, in a container. <clears throat> if it's hundred dollar bills, it said two large suitcases. Hmm. Mm. Uh, well, listen, we started with dogs. We'll end with dogs. And I have to tell you, this isn't a pleasant story, but uh, it kind of goes back to what Phil said at the beginning, that uh, dogs are God's creation and that man absolutely loves dogs. And that's because a Utah man has now been charged, Phil Waters, months after a family of pit bulls that he owns 
brutally attacked his own mother in their backyard. Um, Jeremy Miller, he's charged with seven counts of attack by animals uh, in connection with the brutal death of his 63-year-old mother, Sandra Miller. Um, these were uh, bulldogs that went into a frenzy. And uh, sort of the headline of this story um, is that he's devastated, this guy, 38 years old. Um, not because his Thank mother you. was mauled to death, because his dogs have now been taken away from him. Sure. Um, and he is having trouble coping with that. Uh, does it surprise you that this man's pit bulls mauled to death his mother and his only worry is that his dogs are no longer his? I am not surprised at all. I will say and this is going to get, oh, wow, this will get him going. Mm. By the way, I forgot there's one more dog story. That's a nice. Dog. OK, well, there's no other uh, there. You know, pit bull is not a breed. Oh, they're sorry. Stafford, that... They're Staffordshire bull terriers, and but pit bulls are what they are bred to do, mm. which is fight in a pit and kill other dogs. Mm. Those dogs, that particular breed of dog, turning them into pit bulls, has been destroyed by the people that enjoy that particular activity. Mm. They inbreed those dogs. They are bred to destroy things. And in fact, we had a we had a case in Houston where the uh, a pit bull tore the bumper off of a car because he didn't like it for some reason. <laughs> so I, I'm just telling you, those dogs, and, and you never know because of the inbreeding when those dogs will find something that sets them off. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't want to get graphic, but this dog, it's, there's a quote in here, ripped the flesh off the bone. Well, of course they do. They, because they're, that's what they're bred to do. And mm -hmm. they have their, and I know they, they're going to get people on here, you know, you know, my pit bull is the most gentle, blah, blah, blah. I don't give a crap. I'm telling you almost without exception, when you see a report like this, it is going to be a pit bull or a pit bull mix of some kind. The only other dogs that I've ever seen as a breed that has done similar things were Rottweilers. Mm. And I had a, I'm not even going to describe what I saw a Rottweiler mm. doing to a baby. Ooh. So, and we had to shoot the Rottweiler in the midst of it. So, and, and I've had other instances with Rottweilers specifically, but I'm not surprised at all. And these dogs, and, and I tell you what, you go to, if you try to transport a pit bull in an aircraft, most of these most of these carriers will not transport that dog specifically and um so there's another breed out there where they've mixed pit bulls with with uh bulldogs they miss they've mixed the staffordshire terry the, the pit bulls with bulldogs and they call them american bullies and they've got about the same temperament, and they are the ugliest animal on the face of the planet. Only a face that a mother would love. But uh, these incidents of, of pit bulls killing people, their owners or family members, I have never understood. And this guy's got seven of them. Is that what is that what this guy's saying? And he yeah, he, yeah, laments, yeah. he yeah. laments the. I will tell you this with. Out exception, when I was in narcotics, and Scott, you may may experience the same thing. I can tell you that every dope dealer, with whatever they were dealing, we went in on a search warrant. Most of the times, if they had any kind of an animal in there that was guarding them, it was a pit bull. Mm. So there is a there's a certain culture that has those pit bulls and they think they're the one, they are wonderful, wonderful things. And I'm just going to tell you, they are uh, down to their core. And it, and, it, and it's not, you know, I'm not going to blame the dog. It's, it is man that has taken this dog and 
turned it into a monster. Mm. And, uh, you know, and I've got friends of mine that have them. They all, they're, they're wonderful, blah, 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 blah. I've heard all that crap all the time. And, uh, mm. and then the, you know, the next day you read about another incident like this. Mm. So, well, sorry, not- folks, but that's the one dog that's man has destroyed, has destroyed that, that and the you, true breed of that dog. You will not run into that issue with nugget, um, free hashtag no. free nugget. Um, if God forbid Fred was ever to uh, maul Carm, I'd be devastated. Uh, I would, I would weep. Uh, if anything happened to Carm, I'd be very upset with Fred. Um, Fred is about three pounds. So I don't think it's humanly possible. He has his baby teeth in still, but, uh, I just want my mother to know, um, Oh, I believe Wrangler is his first name, not his occupation. That's interesting. That's interesting. So we're going back to the Oklahoma mom. So maybe his name is Wrangler. And I just thought he was a Wrangler because it was Oklahoma. So I apologize if his first name is actually Wrangler Cole Rickman. Well, let me um, let me add something to the dog story we just talked yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, we're going to end on a nice, sweet dog story. And just one Okay, more. so the question was, I think, was about his affection for the dog's He's more upset about losing the dogs than he is about them killing his mom, right? Co- correct, correct. Okay, so I'll just throw this in there. My wife has always joked about if we were on a cliff and the choice I had was to throw her over the cliff or throw Poppy over the cliff, she's not so sure that she would be walking back to the car with me. And she, mm-hmm. so I'm, I'm just saying. Now, I'm not saying that that's what would happen. I'm just saying that that's what she's kind of got in her own head there. So there you go. I kind of I'm, understand. I, I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying <laughs> I kind of understand. God. <laughs> uh, dogs, look, uh, people are attached to dogs. Um, this last story is a sweet story. Scott, if anything happened, you have more than one dog, Scott. I don't. I no. Nope. You have Pearl, right? I have Pearl. Ed, Eddie. We had Eddie. He was our first dog as a family, mm. and then I like that name, Eddie. What kind of dog was Eddie? Uh, I don't know. Mm. <laughs> it was another big dog. He was a mix of um, I would I would say like golden retriever collie in that realm. Mm. Well. Obviously, if anything happened to Pearl or Eddie, uh, it goes without saying that you would be heartbroken, right? So sure. uh, this is in uh, a dog went missing in California uh, this summer. This summer, family is despondent. The dog shows up 2,000, I got you, COE, 2,000 miles away in suburban Detroit from San Diego to Detroit. Um the Gross Point Animal Adoption Society, uh, which is in Michigan, Detroit, said it quickly discovered that the dog named Mishka had an identity chip implanted in her with information about her owners. Uh, they lived in San Diego. The story is that this dog was stolen. Mishka was stolen and then sold. Um, and the owner was, the new owner was in Detroit. And then they eventually figured out that it had other owners in San Diego. And the, uh, the dog did not hop on a bus, but uh, was stolen, as far as we know, and uh, has now been reunited. Uh, does that warm your heart, Scott Duffy? It does. It also, I think, it, um, really gives a lot of support to to this chipping idea. I've never had um, a, uh, a dog chipped until Pearl, and and so I've uploaded every imaginable piece of information I can, and. Um, I think it's you know it's the, the owner will now be reunited with their long lost dog two thousand miles away. That's that's amazing. Yeah, crazy. And uh, Coe, that reminds me. Um, I don't think Fred has been properly chipped yet because when I brought him in to get chipped, he was too little still. So uh, please, what's that? I'm going to look up. I'm looking up. She's yelling at me from the other room, but do we have, I know that doesn't. So this, we're going to end with this and then final thoughts. Uh, This comes from one of our STS 
Nation. By the way, ever since Phil yelled at me, I've been uncomfortable and my arm has stopped sweating. But uh, you know, and let me let me say something here too. Yeah, I did not yell. No, you just I, asked me. I, uh, I, raised, I raised my voice, but I did not yell. If I yelled, trust me, you would know it. Mm. It's even, yeah, you're right. Okay, I was looking for the list of uh, countries here. Uh, can we get <laughs> to the yell again? No, let's not do that. But here, this is this is what makes STS Nation different than every other community. Right here, I'm about to pop it up. Kim from Auckland, New Zealand, said she was inspired to get back into painting because of STS, and she had a vision for eagled, eagle-eyed Phil Waters. And this is it. This is Detective Phil Waters, her own rendition, her own image. This is a painting of eagle-eyed Phil Waters in his suit as a detective. Um, and I have to say, it's amazing. It's amazing artwork to take um, the concept of a human detective and turn him into an eagle-eyed detective uh, Phil Waters, would you hang this in your office potentially? Well, I was just going to ask. The short answer is yes. I was just going to ask if there's a copy, if there's a way to get a print of that. And mm. uh, and the only thing that would make it better if that was a bald eagle. But uh, yeah. oh. I think she's she's used the the golden eagle look there, I guess. But uh, and if it yeah, was, that, I think that's 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 pretty uh, pretty cool. Yeah. If it was perched atop a Ferrari, uh, that would make it even cooler. But uh, oh, well, sure, sure. Kim, are you here? Make yourself known. But Kim, uh, hopefully you're going to watch this. And I think I have your email now. But email us, surviving the survivor at Gmail, surviving the survivor at Gmail. Uh, let us know what you think of this eagle-eyed Phil Waters. Uh, look, and he has that powerful chest. Um, this is really an amazing painting. You look at the background, the different colors, the textures. Uh, OMG, that's amazing. Look at Phil. That's amazing. Such talent. Look at STS Nation. Um, Phil, do you really need a Ferrari if you can fly is the question. <laughs> what, I know, fly in the Ferrari, so I'm good. Yeah. Mm, look at this. The brush strokes, according to Black Widow, my good friend, uh, who I'm terrified of. She says the brush strokes are gorgeous. Uh, Phil's dad voice keeps me in line. Uh, amazing, <laughs> uh, amazing painting. Yes, it is. So, uh, last week it was Easter this week. It's uh, uh Sunday. I got to say the goodbyes in a moment. Um, Phil waters, any parting thoughts today before we wrap this up and say goodbye? Uh, people are just, uh, enamored with the painting here. love the painting. Some folks are so one thing I cannot do, well, I can't do most things, but one thing I definitely can't do is uh, dr paint or draw. I can do uh, stick figures, and that is it. Phil Waters, your final um, your final thoughts today, Phil? Uh, well, it's been a lot of fun uh, today. We've had, uh, you know, started off with dogs and ended up with eagles. So uh, that's, a, hmm. that's a good day. And uh, interesting discussion. And, uh, and, I, and I, I will say this. Um, I, I do appreciate the STS nation. I appreciate these folks that are watching and that are contributing in a positive way to our discussions, especially with the thing in Oklahoma with these, uh, these two, uh, two gals. And, uh, and, uh, I would just, uh, I appreciate that. I always like to have uh, the facts, right. And I want to have, uh, it's always a journey for the truth. And, and those folks, uh, provide that. So I, I do appreciate them. And, and I would say again, that we need to keep, uh, the OSBI, uh, detectives, investigators, uh, those women, the families involved and, and that community, those, those communities up there in our prayers. And, and, uh, of course, what we want is the most positive, uh, best outcome for this thing is to, to find them, uh, alive. And, uh, but just, um, Keep looking up, folks. Have a great weekend, and and uh, hope you all uh, just have a, a great rest of the day. Beautifully said, Phil Waters. Uh, greeting from greetings from Norway, and uh, this this comment warms my heart from Lena. You are the best company on a Friday night, nine p.m. here now. So uh, we love to be with you. Um, 
Look, the merch store, uh, people are saying, well, can you now sell art in the merch store? Uh, yeah, we can do singles. Uh, we're building um, an entire uh, world here uh, with STS, an entire world. I'm glad that Phil and Scott are part of it. Scott Duffy, uh, your parting thoughts on this always quirky Friday. Yeah, keep keep the Fridays quirky. I mean, it's um, it's a you know there's joy. a you know there's a saying keep Portland weird, right? So Absolutely. let's keep yeah, yeah, let's keep STS quirky on Fridays. Mm -hmm. That could be another shirt. Keep STS quirky. I think but, it also goes to add that you know with with everybody in law enforcement, but uh, with Phil and I adding our you know our expertise, but also. Um, we try to also interject some humor because it is a very, very dark every, every day you go into law enforcement. So you do need those glimmers of hope and sometimes humor is away. But I want to say in this week, um, a couple of birthdays in the family. So my oldest son, Jack, and my sister-in-law, Val, and her daughter, uh, Becca, the birthday week so happy happy birthday i love them. the name Anybody jack else, what, what are we doing for jack's birthday how old is jack yeah he turned 22 scott you're getting old yeah. um getting old. what are we doing for jack's birthday well we took it he's in college so we uh my wife and i went and met him and his lovely girlfriend for took him out for a nice little dinner mm -hmm. and um because you know we're, we're it's this is it this is his final week or his final month mm -hmm. For, for college. So hopefully, um, fingers crossed, he gets across that stage. <laughs> and Scott Duffy, what's uh, what's his plan for life? Is he going to become an FBI agent? No, I don't think he's going to become an FBI agent. I don't. He's in the digital. He's he's definitely got the knack and the the brains. He's, he's helped me quite a bit in some of my projects where I need help media. So he's a media guy. He's hmm. Maybe he can come aboard STS and... Uh, sure. I don't know, create digital art. So uh, there you have it, everyone. Uh, the weekend is here. We've all made it in one piece. These weeks are flying by. In just a matter of a few weeks, Phil Waters, as I depart on the book tour, Phil Waters will be departing back to the big island of Hawaii. I cannot wait to see Nugget. Um, I plan to give him a virtual hug. And until that point, I will say, Love you, America. These are some of the countries that were in the chat today. Nigeria, love you. Romania, South Africa, London, Newcastle in the UK, Oklahoma. Why are balloons flying up? Kansas in Oklahoma, two very uh, exotic locations. And we've got Norway, Estonia, perhaps the most exotic locale, North Jersey, uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, Eugene, Oregon, and of course, Houston and Philadelphia. And uh, let's keep our uh, thoughts and prayers with the people of uh, New York City as they dealt with that 15 second quake. I'm glad no one was hurt. Um, and I'm glad they're all OK. And they hope they stop talking about themselves uh, at some point this weekend. And uh, hopefully there will be an arrest in the Oklahoma case. Until then, got a jam packed week next week. We'll be back on Monday. We might be doing two shows, Shannon Gardner's in court, and uh, we're following Chad Daybell. That trial is set to really start in earnest now that jury selection is just about over. So see you, everybody. Have a great weekend. Don't do anything crazy. Don't get in trouble, and do not get arrested, and stay quirky.